Welcome to Walt Disney World. It's your first time performing at the Flower and Garden Festival. So, you've had any time to kind of have fun, explore before the concert? When you got here, what's the first thing you did? Well, uh, the first thing I did when I got here was take my kids out to the pool and let them run all of their energy. <laughs> right? I understand because, that. You know as well as I do, once you hit that exit, like I think it's 250 or something, it, everything goes downhill from there. <laughs> right? Yeah. So uh, it, it was a lot of fun. You know, the kids and I and my wife, we've been here for a couple of days getting to enjoy. We come down here. This is a, 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 you know, a place we love to visit. I was joking around with these guys in the van. I said, you know, one of the friends that was with us, like, Bo needs to slow down a little bit. He's walking around fast. And I turn around, Bo's not the one that needs to slow down. It's my wife. <laughs> to catch here, you know? So, uh, you know, it's, it's always a lot of fun when we get to come here to the, the happiest place on earth. Oh, yeah. Uh, first thing for, for me, uh, just, yeah, just looked around, man. You know, it's my first time, <clears throat> first time to Orlando, actually. Okay. Um, and to one of the Disney, you know, uh, part of the uh, branch of the business as well. So it's really cool for me coming from New Zealand. It's so far away. Um, but we grew up with with everything Disney and you know all, all the same cartoons and everything like that. So. It's it pretty surreal being here and, and being able to perform. So just checked the place out a bit and got a little bit of rest as well. So uh, before sound checking, yeah. And but you do have Aussie, Aussie land there just south of you in Australia, right? <laughs> yeah. they, they don't have the mouse, they have the kangaroo, yeah. right? Oh, there's, we, I mean, we got our own. We, we got our native, uh, our native animals, the kiwi. So we got like, you know, cartoons with, with a kiwi bird. But, um, but it's nothing like Mickey. You know, everyone loves Mickey. That's right. Yeah. You, sir. What did I do? I didn't know what Dylan said because we came together, so we came, like, it was already an afternoon or yeah. something. Yeah. And we had to sound check, so that was yesterday. So we had a little chance to just look around. And first time for me here also. I've been to Disney, Paris, <laughs> because I used to live in Europe before, but it's, uh, of course, it's, it's completely different. The one in Paris is smaller. It's beautiful too, but. I was really looking forward to finally know this place. I think tomorrow we're going to have more time. To yeah, tomorrow we're going to get some rides. So since you've been here before, Bo, what's your favorite attraction? Well, normally my favorite thing to do is to go on the Toy Story ride and uh, because it is a major challenge in our family to see who can get the most points. And so that is one of our favorite things to do. And... Um, you know, this, this time for me was very special because my kids never had a chance to experience Epcot, you know, fully before. A lot of our stuff is centralized in the Magic Kingdom. And I think one of the things I love most about Disney is over the past, oh goodness, I'd say at least five, six years that we've been coming, it's always, uh, it's always fun for the kids, but there's really so much more now to do for the adults. When I was a kid and my parents brought me here, you know, there was, they were stuck. They were stuck <laughs> with the kids, you know. And now Disney is so much more. They've got, um, they've got the availability for, for parents to enjoy fine dining, but yet also, you know, to be able to uh, just kick back and, and be a kid yourself, you know, and not take it too serious. And great, and great concerts. Oh, man, great concerts. <laughs> well, about that. My, my son still wants to know where the golf club is that knocks this big ball. <laughs> And if you saw my golf game, the head of my golf club is that big already. So. But, uh, yeah, this is, this is really a lot of fun. Epcot has been the, the highlight of our, our trip this year. And you've kind of got a Disney connection with ABC as well, with American Idol. So what was that like to be there in the heyday and now having that all come to a close? It's really like the close of an era, and you, you've been there um, associated with for a long time. What, what did that feel like? Well, you know, one of the things about the, uh, and I, I throw this out, the, the American Idol experience, because Disney uh, invited us to help open the American Idol experience many years back. And so that was really a highlight for me, to be, to be a part of that brand. It is now come to a close, 15 year run, it was great. Uh, I was just out there celebrating with them last week and helping close things down. And I really do. I think that uh, you, pr you put it the, the perfect way. It's just the end of an era. And uh, I think that it, that particular show opened up so many opportunities for different people, myself being one of them. But also, it has opened up, uh, you know, 
opportunities for other television shows that I won't name their names, but you know they've they've uh, got success because they followed a format that was close. They're on original one, but that was close. So I think that it's uh, what is that whole thing? Uh, uh, imitation is the greatest form of flattery. So uh, 15 year run. You know, the only tears that we shed that night were tears of happiness because so many people had their dreams come true. And uh, I've got a feeling that, you know, there's going to be many, many people that look back on the American Idol brand in five years from now and say, man, I just wish I kind of had a, you know, ha had a little piece of that. So, But us artists are still out touring. I mean, I'm out here with one of the greatest bands on earth, Blood, Sweat, and Tears. And if I hadn't played uh, Swint the Spinning Wheel on the show, mm -hmm. they would have never known about it. So I owe a lot to, to American Idol, and I, I, owe, I owe a lot to my friends here in Blood, Sweat, and Tears. Well, you look a little different than when people remember you. Can you yes. tell us uh, <laughs> what's with the new look? And Well, you know, the new look for me started a few a few years back when I joined Blood, Sweat, and Tears when I cut my hair off, I right. guess, right? So, uh, right. And, and I did. When, when I decided fully to, to come into this band and to dedicate to it, that first year was a lot of us feeling out the waters, uh, you know, this was supposed to be three shows, then it turned into five shows, then eight shows, and now three years later, we're out here and we're still doing it. We love it, you know? But the the part that, that encouraged me to shut the bow side of things down and to solely focus on this was the, the musicianship and the people. And with that came a change of how I look. And, you know, these are, I'm not busting out like I'm the coolest cat. <laughs> these are prescription. It's <laughs> getting old, okay? So, uh, but... The, that's, that really is. There was no motivating factor behind it. Uh, you know, I, ironically, I've caught good, uh, both negative and positive about it. Oh, I loved your long hair. And then people, oh, you look great now. And it's always tough folks. It's, you know, the scissors didn't affect the vocal cords. They're, mm -hmm. they're still working. You know? right. So uh, it's, uh, but it's always, you know, less. When people come up and they tell you, oh, I liked your hair better. I liked it. You're in the public eye. You would be amazed some of the people or, or some of the things people feel like they can just come up and say <laughs> randomly. It's like, wow, you know? But uh, you, you have to have a thick skin in this business, but you also have to treat people, you know, not everybody knows who you are. Not everybody's kept up with your your schedule over the past 10 years. So when they come up and say, oh, are you still playing music? Mm -hmm. You can't, you know, why, why get an attitude and fault people, you know what I mean? The best thing that you can do is encourage them to continue to jump back on board and be a part of what you're doing. And uh, that is a very easy thing for me to do when I mention the name Blood, Sweat, and Tears. Mm -hmm. You're in a really good place, I think, because this is Epcot World Showcase, and you've got a little World Showcase really right there. <laughs> yes, so, right. how does that kind of mesh together, being from such diverse places? I think it's. I think it's. You know, we, we talk about the same thing. I mean, music is a language. Isn't yeah. it? it doesn't matter. It's really a universal language. Of course, I need to speak English to communicate with them, or he would have to speak Portuguese with me. <laughs> I speak a redneck yeah. dialect he has not yet figured out. No. <laughs> Actually, right now, I just have a single word. <laughs> but I'm, I'm enunciating. <laughs> but I mean, you know, when it comes to playing music, I think it's very, it's easier than people who think of. Even if I'm from Brazil, or he's from America, or he's from New Zealand, yeah. or somebody's from Japan, or whatever. Because it becomes one language, and mm -hmm. that's pretty much. Uh, so it's not it's not hard at all, actually. It's very smooth, you know, to do that. What about you, Slick? Yeah, it's, there's another guy in the band who's from uh, England. Uh, he's been living in New York for I think 20 years, but he's originally from England. So, uh, yeah, same as what Leo said. Um, everyone's got different accents, you know, whether they speak whatever uh, language they're used to speaking, but music we all relate we can all relate that way yeah. if you if you can play to a certain level then we can all relate you know so it's and everyone in the band is uh, phenomenal musicians you know for many years there was a, a, a tribute band here that played all different genres have you heard of the uh, landscaping band Mulch, sweat and Mulch, shears, sweat and shears. shears. <laughs> i saw them um the last time we were here i guess it's been we were here for halloween a halloween fest in uh, 2014, we, we came, and I saw that ve that vehicle driving around with a band, and so I was at the time I was sitting, hey okay, guys, check it out. You know? <laughs> but uh, that's that's really cool, man. I mean, that's you know, you get a good chuckle out of it. But honestly, you know, one of the funniest things out is you bring that up. 
the people that show up to these shows, and you look out in that audience, and you might see someone that's 85, and then you might see someone in their 50s or 60s, and then you might see, you know, trickling down into the young. And there are three generations of people that come out to see this show. Mm -hmm. You know, the grandparents, the parents, and the kids. And for me, the people that, you know, still say, oh man, you know, I saw you on TV, that's really great. You, you love all that stuff. But when they tell you, hey, I didn't know what blood, sweat, and tears was. I was nine years old. And you look at this, this person that's like, oh, you're... You're only 19, you look like you're 30, because you're, you're big, and they're like, oh, I watched you on Idol, and it did this. And then you got the mom there who's going, oh, the first memory I ever had of this, and before you know it, they're all lined up, and you see this, and it's like, it's very, it's very humbling mm. to see a whole family that is interested in this music, and they love the music, and then you see them singing the words, man, you're like, wow. So, to be a part of something that has, it's sustained, itself so long, mm -hmm. it's never lost its uh, validity, it's always stayed right, right where it's supposed to be with the greatest musicians on the face of the planet, man. That's, that's some pretty cool stuff, you know, especially crossing those uh, generation gaps. Man, yeah, Mickey Mouse, I love you, man. You owe me 50 bucks. I'm coming to get you, Mickey Mouse.